We're continuing our discussion of the virtual reality and Final Cut Pro 10, and hopefully you got to watch Mark's previous episodes on the subject. He's doing this whole, like, almost a little mini dissertation on the subject as he's playing with all these toys. So you have something new to show us with regard to VR today. I do, and, and just, I'm very new to all this stuff. I'm learning as I'm going, but I'm, it's <laughs> fascinating to me, so I'm yeah. just trying to share a couple things that I've picked up, and it's changing very quickly, so yeah. by the time you watch, there's probably a bunch of new things out there. But um, we talked in previous episodes about how to dip your toes into VR by using something like um, this Viewmaster to uh, watch VR and this Theta S camera to acquire VR. Um, today, I want to talk a little bit more towards the high end to see aspirationally where things might be going and what's interesting and how Final Cut Pro interacts with how that. How it fits into that whole yeah. thing. Yeah. So if you are acquiring with this Nokia Ozo, um, which is this definitely high end camera where it can also stream. In fact, Alex was using three of these to stream live at NAB. Um, a, the a Nokia booth. Th yeah, through their the whole truck thing into the Nokia booth in the central hall. Um, but if you've got material from this that's stereoscopic, you can work with it right in Final Cut Pro. And I want to show you a couple of ideas about you, what you can do. So here I am in Final Cut Pro, and stereoscopic means you've got two copies. You've got a left eye and a right eye. And each one of these uh, can be 2K or 4K, really depends on, on how you're shooting it. But what I've done is I've just got these two, uh, this clip in the timeline. It's been converted to this equa rectangular format already through Nokia software, which by the way, you have to do on a Mac Pro. With, right. with all this data of all these eight lenses coming in. I wonder how long that takes. I don't know. I, okay. don't know. I, didn't, I was <laughs> given the file okay. in this case. So there, there's some power required. But here I'm just on a laptop doing this. So, and you don't see a lot of motion, but this is, uh, this is Mac Break Weekly. So this is uh, Leo Laporte and Alice Lindsay on the show actually talking about the Ozo because it's, it's shooting this. So um, the first thing that comes up is, well, how can I really see what this will look like from a user perspective? And the same, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to return to these uh, Dashwood tools. But this time, I'm going to use the Dashwood 360 VR toolbox, which is the high-end version. Um, right. And the, really, the main difference between it and the Express version, which is only $100, is that the toolbox version um, works with stereoscopic material. Right. And I think the assumption is if you're working with a $60,000 camera, <laughs> you know, you, it's, this, these tools cost a little more, but they're worth it. They do some really cool things because they work stereoscopically. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is with the little helper app, uh, the 360 viewer, I'm going to bring its window up front, HD, HMD, head mounted display, preview window up front here. And this allows us to see uh, what this looks like. If you had headset Post processing. On. If you had headset on or you had a flat display. So I can I can drag around now. And now normally you would just see, you know, Alex and Leo there talking, but now you can see the whole studio. This is the studio up in Petaluma. And you look around the whole studio and see absolutely everything in there. You know, the floor, whatever. Everything's everything's available in there. I can so nice. right click to center it. A little bit funky. There we go. Right click to center it. And if you are have an Oculus Rift connected, you can also choose to view this on a on the Rift. This is the DK2 right now, the developer version since Oculus has just really started shipping. So this is a really useful tool for um, being able to view this VR output while you're mm -hmm. editing. And just taking me a minute to reset this. Now, but what I want to focus on is the idea of compositing because I'm interested in motion graphics. Sure. And uh, the idea of combining elements into a VR scene is very interesting. So one of the tools that Tim has here, we looked at earlier, there's one called, uh, to, I have to put my glasses on to read it, um, Project 2D on a Sphere. So we did that in an earlier episode. The Ripple logo. logo. But all that does is project it on the Sphere. There's a, another plugin he's got, which at this point is a beta version called 3D, 3D 360 Plane, okay? Now what that lets you do is something a little different and very interesting. So I have it applied up here, and I, I don't know if it turned on right now, but you see I've put in the Ripple logo for both the left and the right eyes, mm -hmm. okay? So I'm gonna turn this on, and if I move this out of the way, you might see I've gone ahead and positioned it. Um, right over the window. Right over the window right there, because this basically takes any object and puts it in 3D space that you can push forward and backward in 3D space and attach to something. So huh. now, if I use this HD preview and I 
slide around. There is the Ripple logo, and it's attached to that source. This is a video, right? So right. even what's I'm not playing right now, but I could certainly play. And you might not be able to tell I'm playing, but if I go back, you'll see these guys are talking. Is it and it's, it's, kind of it's feeding a lot of data right now, wow. so it's a little it's a little um, uh, choppy. Um, but you can also use a lower playback quality. But my main point is that I've got this uh, Ripple logo um, attached to the scene, which I just think is is phenomenal to be able to do that. And just to get, because this can be anything, right? This can be text, it can be animated, it can be a video. It can and be an can emoji. Be... So one thing I thought about, what if you took um, somebody on green screen, okay? Right. So what I did is, you can see right here in the timeline. He's already playing with some yeah, what I ideas. did is I've got this shot of um, your daughter Rachel, yeah. and it's a it's a compound clip. So what I did <laughs> let's let's open up the compound clip. Um, I took Rachel, and it just I just have her keyed on uh, with a shape mask and the keyer in a circle. I see that. Okay. So then what I did, if we go back over and let me move this other way, I'm a little this got, it's sticky. <laughs> it right. keeps moving. There we go. Um, if we go back to our scene on the video for our clip right here. Move back over. And I'm gonna close and turn off this first instance of 3D 360 beta. Here's the second one where you see I've got the compound clip selected as there. the import source. Right. So if I turn that on, uh, we can see there she is in the window. <laughs> You've composited her in the window. I composited her in the window. And um, <laughs> what's kind of neat about this is like there she is, and this is video this time, so if I go to the beginning. So she's moving and everything. She's yeah, yeah, she's too. actually, let me, so I'll go right past the logo introduction to right about there, because it's a very short clip. But if I pan over to her now, and I see if I get her to stop moving around, and if I play, give it a minute, because this uh, yeah, is a huge amount of data on, on the little laptop that I'm playing it on. Um, but she's actually moving around. I can't really see her moving right now, but it's a very short clip. So it, and it freezes after the end of it. So basically, you're compositing her against whatever that window is, whatever's look. Yeah, there, there she's moving it. There, so her hair is kind of blowing a little yeah. bit there. There we go. <laughs> right. So I've just I've just added a character in a 360 environment. So if you think about from a storytelling perspective, that you can shoot 360 real live actors, but you can add other elements into that 360 scene. Um, other actors or things like from a motion graphics perspective, think about snow. Yeah. Think about in motion you can create snow, right? right. That's actually in 3D space. Sure. You could be wearing um, a, a, an Oculus Rift or a, a, a HTC Vive or a little Viewmaster thing with your phone and looking around and see snow falling around you, all around you, um, in 3D space. That's so yeah. added to the scene afterwards. So to me, you know, this isn't. This is sort of just a demonstration of some ideas of where this stuff is going. And I know there's a lot of people doing way more sophisticated stuff than this. But, you know, I'm doing this on Final Cut Pro with you know footage that was given to me here. Um, but you could do the same thing with this. It just wouldn't be stereoscopic. And uh, the quality wouldn't be as high. Quality would not be as good. Because that's probably 4K. Right. You right. said it could be 2K, 4K, whatever. Right. 4K, you have so yeah, much more. Yeah. Each day. of these, each of these lenses can shoot 4K. Yeah. And, and here, this is one lens shooting yeah. HD, it's so it's a, a big, that's where the 960 money. 960 by yeah. 360 or but 1080 by But start to develop the skill set and start to develop the, the thinking through of what kind of things work well for 360, you can get into it now um, and just start playing with the stuff. And Final Cut is, is well positioned to do this because it can handle uh, the media, you know, because we're already playing streaming multiple 4K streams <laughs> in real time. But what's not well positioned right now is the hardware. And this, no, I'm, I'm sorry, but. <laughs> Well, let's see, let's see. Right, right. Well, I'm doing this on a little. Right, I mean, I, the fact is there's a ton of data and yeah. uh, I, you know, it's pretty clear that Apple yeah. needs to step up, you know, make their hardware, beef it up a little bit. But yeah. you know, everyone's hoping and waiting, so. Um, excellent, is there anything else you wanted to? No, I just on? wanted to give a sense of what's possible with compositing elements in full um, stereoscopic um, 4K 360 VR. Wow. So, I feel like maybe we should you know, do a series of these. This is fantastic. Uh, all these little inexpensive tools, you can start doing VR stories and playing with it right now. And uh, thanks, Mark, for all your research. Thanks for all your homework. I know, you're, like you said, you're still learning this stuff, but it's, I'm, I'm fascinated by it.
it's just it's just cool anyway uh check us out at rippletraining.com uh, all the links below uh, relative to social media and we'll see you on the next episode of mac break studio